If you're looking for rural living and to get out of the hustle and bustle of Charleston, Mount Pleasant, and Somerville, you're in luck, because in this video, we're gonna talk about the top five rural areas to live around Charleston. Welcome back everybody. As always, I am Bill, your favorite YouTubing Charleston realtor. Today we're talking all about rural living, but before we get started, a huge thank you to my clients and friends, Casey and Sam. We're out here on their property, I helped them buy, and they're building this awesome little cottage out here. So everyone, say thank you to them down in the comments and let's get into this. We're talking about the top five rural areas around greater Charleston, where you can still buy land and have some privacy. So we're gonna start with the closest area into downtown Charleston, and that is Wadmala Island. Now, Wadmala Island is a massive rural island just southwest of downtown Charleston. Now, it is 42 square miles, has a population of around 3,100 people. Now, you can be anywhere from 13 miles to about 25 miles to downtown Charleston when you get onto Wadmala because of its size. Now, it starts right at the Church Creek Bridge from Johns Island and heads all the way down to Rockville where you can actually see Bohickett Marina and Seabrook Islands. Now, if you're looking to purchase on Wadmala, there's some options that you've got and the prices are pretty wide and it's also one of the more expensive places because of its proximity to Charleston. Now looking at the homes, yes you can buy a very small home on a small piece of land probably in the 200s but be prepared to have some tiny house living and have to do some renovations on it. Your sweet spot for an acre-ish and a home that's move-in ready is going to be in the 400s to 500s but if you want deep water because it is an island and there is a lot of it, you can expect to pay up to over $5 million for that. Now, if you wanna buy some land like my clients did and build a home, now, depending on where the lot is, if it has access and if it's deep water, you can go anywhere from $60,000 an acre up to over $200,000 an acre. Now, there are two things that set Wadmala apart from anywhere else in Charleston, and one of them actually sets it apart from anywhere else in the United States. And one is that it has the only winery in Charleston with deep water vineyards. And what sets it apart from anywhere else in the country is the Charleston Tea Plantation, which is the only place in America where tea is grown commercially. So working our way clockwise from here, we're gonna head across the Wadmala River to where we've got three areas that we're gonna kind of lump together because they're all neighbors, and that's Megat, Hollywood, and Ravenel, South Carolina. Now, when we break these down, Megat is only 18 square miles with a population of just over 1,100. Hollywood is 25 square miles, the population of about 5,200, and Ravenel is 13 square miles, with a population of about 2,600. Now when we break down the small differences between the three, Megat is going to be the most rural, and that's because they've got a giant zoning ordinance, which I'll link below in the description. We're not gonna get into too much detail. So just know that it is there to preserve low density housing and setting up different zones and land usage. Hollywood, South Carolina borders Megat. It's just a hair closer to downtown. Does feature some bigger subdivisions or actual subdivisions. Unlike Megat, you've got Kings River Preserve and Stono Ferry, which has an amazing golf course if you're looking for a place to golf. Uh, but it's still very rural and there's a lot of rural land in Hollywood outside of these subdivisions. And one of the nice things is it has one of the only remaining Piggly Wigglies in the entire Charleston area. And then we have Ravenel. And Ravenel stretches from around Highway 17 all the way up to just south of Somerville. And you do have some subdivisions in there. DR Horton's building a brand new Hillcrest community there. But for the most part, it's still 
very rural. And when we look at the biggest differences between the three, Megat is the most rural and actually has the most waterfront properties. So that's gonna bring their median price up much higher. And that's actually into the 700s. Hollywood's gonna have median prices into the 600s, but that's gonna be because of those two subdivisions that I had mentioned previously. And then Ravenel is gonna be in the mid 400s. Now, one of the nice things about this area and Hollywood in general is there is the West County Aquatic Center, which is part of the county park system in Charleston. So it's $2 per person for entry, and it is a 6,000 square foot seasonal pool. So if you're looking for something to do on those hot summer days, like that is a great place to go and just spend the day and take a swim. Now we're gonna to head to a place called the front porch of the Low Country, and that is Walterboro. Now, if you're a fan of true crime like myself, you've probably heard of Walterboro or its county. It's in Colleton County, and the Colleton County Courthouse was recently put on the map for the trial of Alec Murdaugh. So if you've been following that, that's where we are now. Now, Walterboro is a small town, only about seven square miles with a population of 5,500, but it is quintessential small town Southern living. It has its little main street where you're gonna find local shops and antique dealers all over the place. So if you're looking for that feel to live like right out of a movie, then Walterboro is gonna be the spot for you and you're only about 50 miles from downtown Charleston. So in an hour to hour and a half, you can be into Charleston, but you're also not far from Beaufort as well. Now with small town living, you also have that small town culture that comes with it. And in Walterboro every year, you have the Colleton County Rice Festival, which celebrates the county's history with the rice crop. Some other attractions are the 800 acre Walterboro Wildlife Sanctuary and the South Carolina Artisan Center. Now, median price in Walterboro is pretty affordable, especially for the Charleston area. And you're looking at about $250,000 median price. Our next stop is about 10 miles north of Somerville into Ridgeville, where you're only about 35 miles from Charleston. Now, Ridgeville has become a big industrial center of Charleston with three really big companies pulling in, bringing in about 5,500 jobs over the next few years. And these are Redwood Materials, which is a battery recycling plant that was founded by one of the founders of Tesla. We have Volvo, which is building one car there now and because of Redwood, they kind of went together. They're building an EV vehicle starting soon. And then a three million square foot Walmart distribution plant. Three million square feet, if you're not familiar about how big that is, it's about 52 football fields. And so with all of that, there is a lot of growth going on right around the highways in Ridgeville, but there are still a lot of rural areas up there so if you're looking to work in one of those places or want to be close to Somerville, but outside of that hustle and bustle, Ridgeville probably could be the place for you. And median price here year to date is in the mid 400s. So you can expect to pay, I'd say between mid threes to mid fives for anything that's move in ready. And now, on the northern side of Charleston, just north of Mount Pleasant, we have Awanda. We're about 29 miles from downtown Charleston, right on Highway 17. Now, a big draw about this area is because it borders Mount Pleasant, you can have rural living, but still be accessible to everything that Mount Pleasant has to offer. Now, prices in here are going to be a median in the 400s. However, there is a lot of waterfront so you can spend one, two, even over $3 million for a house with deep water. And while Awanda is just a small fishing town with a population of about 1,400, it doesn't mean there's absolutely nothing to do there. One of the favorite attractions there is Awanda Green, which they have called a laid back music venue in a laid back town. And then there's the Aviation Conservation Center, which has the Center for Birds of Prey, which is always something fun to go see. 
Good. So let me know down in the comments, could you live in a rural area like this? And be sure to check out this video right here. I think you're really gonna like it. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And again, if you're make, looking to make a move in the next three days to three years, I can help. My name is Bill Olson. I am a Charleston realtor and I'm here to help you make better decisions.